Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video here in the streamer event for the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. Today we're taking a look at Sacrifice Vampires, which get to play with Bartolome at 2 mana. A 2-1 legendary vampire can sacrifice another creature or artifact to put a plus one plus one counter on it. So this is awesome alongside all these cheap vampires like Icar Drinker and Voldaren Epicure that we don't mind sacrificing, especially because it can also generate an artifact, Epicure making a blood token when it enters, and Icar Drinker we can turn into an incubator token which can either turn into a 2-2 or we can simply sacrifice it to Bartolome and then we also have other blood tokens of course with Harvester which can take out opposing creatures Bloodcaster will leave behind blood tokens when our vampires die and can potentially transform into a summoner if we make enough of them. And a great way to make lots of blood tokens is with Voldaren Estate, not only fixing our mana, but once we have five or more vampires in play, this can simply tap to make a blood token for free. So that's awesome alongside Bartolome and of course a Bloodcaster as well. And then all these blood tokens will also work quite nicely alongside Vito, a 4-4 flyer, saying whenever we sacrifice another permanent, we gain two life if it's the first time this result resolved if it's the second time the opponent loses to, and if it's the third time we get to make a 4-3 white and black vampire demon creature token with flying. And it's not too difficult to enable veto turn after turn with enough estates and other sacrifice synergies in play. And veto, especially alongside Bartolome, is kind of what we're trying to assemble. And then we've got a Vran, which can also drain the opponent as our creatures die, plays well in a sacrifice deck. At 3 mana we've got a full set of Mark of Baron, which has both Madness and Convoke, so we can sacrifice a Blood Token, and then a discard Mark of Baron, and then still cast it through Madness, potentially tapping some Vampires in the process, so that can also present kind of a surprise blocker that the opponent may not be playing around. Then we've got a full set of Preacher, which is another nice new 3-drop from the Lost Caverns, 2-4 with Death Touch. When it attacks, either makes a 1-1 lifelinking vampire token, if we're behind on life, if we're ahead on life, we get to draw a card at the cost of one life. If we have equal life totals, we get to do both for one turn, which can also be pretty fun. And then I've got two copies of the Evangelist, which is also quite solid. 2-1 that enters making a bad token, when it dies it makes another one, and has Battle Cry, so it can pump our team when attacking. And then at 4 mana, of course, can go without Edgar. I was debating whether I wanted 2 or 3 copies of Edgar in the deck, since it's still quite decent in multiples, as one of them will turn into the coffin, which can spawn more vampire tokens. And then I've got one Henrika, which also plays well in a sacrifice deck. And finally one Olivia, which is also quite good with all these new legendary vampires to make sure we keep the card in play that we reanimate. But again, there's a lot of top-end vampires that you could play and swap around, and a lot of ways to approach vampire decks in standard. And then a mana base also picked up Cavern of Souls, which is part of the reason why all these three plus color creature decks can exist. And Cavern of Souls is perfect here to fix our mana, make our vampires uncounterable, also have secluded core Courtyard, and then of course a state, which can be a bit painful, but in the late game is quite valuable. And then a Restless Events, a new creature land that can turn into a 2-3 with Menace, that can also help us discard and draw, so it gives us a bit more card selection. And then some more dual lands here to round out the mana base, a couple basics in case we need to search those up, and then the channel lands offer more utility. Not playing with Iganjo, don't really want a lot of white sources, since we can't produce white mana for Iganjo with Cavern, Courtyard or Estate, so we would be down to just double Sanctum, also why we don't have any white creature lands in the mana base. So that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and our hand seems fine missing a two drop but we get to get on the board right away and then the drinker plays well with baron giving it plus one plus one later opponent on an explorer deck perhaps and there's a nice two drop the blood token can also help enable madness Okay, so if I were to play Bloodcaster, sag the blood token, we can play Baron for free. So just gonna have to pass it back for now. Spelunker gonna explore once here. First they get to Scry as well. And then they can put the land into play right away.
All right, so we get to draw a card, put Baron on the battlefield. And we found an untapped land, perfect. So now veto over Henrika, I think. Even though Henrika, we can sack a creature, which would trigger Bloodcaster. But our opponent can just sack a Spelunker, which is not that exciting. So yeah, we'll play veto. And then send Bloodcaster and Harvester. Looks like they might have a bounce spell, Fading Hope, Bouncing Veto, as opposed to their own Spelunker. Okay, that's fine. Now Spelunker for two. Scry to the top. And our opponent's got a counter spell coming up here. But they don't necessarily have it in hand yet. Ran. Also an option. It's actually preferred to resolve Henrika now that the 1-1's one gone, even though they might have another counterspell in hand, of course. We know for a fact that they're gonna draw a counterspell next turn, so this is probably my only real chance to resolve Henrika. And it's gonna be a hex catcher in response, that's fine. So each player sacrifices a creature, or we can draw a card for now, and then next turn play Vran, and then Sack a creature. Yeah, let's just draw. And then with Vran in play, we can drain the opponent for a bit. And then we could still maybe animate the uh, Restless events as well. Okay, opponent had a Memory Deluge as their last card. So not hating my position. We get to now resolve Veto. And Vran. They might have wanted to tap their mana differently to keep up double blue potentially. So start with Vran. That resolves pretty swiftly. So now go for Veto. And then we can even convoke a Baron. And then probably just tap the Drinker which I'm gonna sacrifice here in a second. And our opponent's dead, they're gonna get drained by Vito and by Vran, and we get to attack with our flyers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a fine hand. Could play one drop into Bartolome on two. Could also just play a tapped event to start out so we don't have to worry about it later. And then turn to double one drop, or now Harvester. If we wait on Bartolome until we have a bit more stuff in play, it's usually going to be better for us. Opponent's playing the same colors. And a Socialite, so also Vampires. Okay, Mark of Baron could be quite nice. So let's say we play Epicure and Drinker, then I can still Madness with Convoke here. So no need to attack or activate Harvester. And then we'll have a ton of Vampires in play, so we can cheaply activate Voldaren Estate. Opponent with her own Mark of Baron. Which enters with a counter thanks to the Socialite. But they didn't have a third land. Okay, back of Bartolome. So now if I were to play Vito, I could sack Harvester. Um, but I guess it doesn't kill much here, just an Epicure. So in that case, if I play Bartolome, I can activate a state cheaply, which is probably better. And then next turn with Bartolome in play, Vito is going to be even more impactful. Now I could still attack, because if our opponent does block with the Baron, I can finish it off with Harvester. 
but that means not attacking with Harvester itself, which is probably better at this point. So let's keep it simple. And pass a turn. Can make a blood token at instant speed. And then I'm looking forward to sacking multiple things in one turn to get that large token. Opponent is attacking. They could have another Mark of Baron here, of course. So, how do we want to block, if at all? I'm just going to take it. I think we're far enough ahead. Our opponent maybe just wanted to enable the Socialite, Epicure enters with a counter. And their own Bartolome. Okay, but we have Vito coming up. Could also activate a Blood Token now to discard Bartolome, but I'll wait for that. And then, yep, yeah, play Vito. And then now Harvester can take out Baron. Other opponent will be able to sack it in response. We'll still shrink down their team somewhat. And then Bartolome can certainly attack. I'll use the Harvester now. And then I'm happy to attack with Bartolome. And that's it. And then before damage we can sack a few things. How about an Icar Drinker? And then a Blood Token. And get our Flyer. And then we could do this whole loop once again during the opponent's turn if we want to make another flyer. Opponent's going to go for the throat on Vito. So, yeah, I guess I'll sack some stuff here. And then I don't think we'll get another flyer if I sack Vito with the last effect here, but I guess we can try and find out. Our opponent would still die to our flyer here with them at four. Otherwise, I could have sacked Baron, make another flyer, which probably would have sealed the deal. Opponent goes digging for more interaction. And attacks all out. Can block the 1 1 Epicure, but they should just be dead on the way back. Sacking Epicure denies the life gain. And another Epicure, that's fine. Alright, so we had a nice back and forth here with the two Vampire decks, but yeah, V2 was quite impactful alongside Bartolome. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with what looks like a keepable hand. Turn one drinker now. Turn two most likely play harvester. And then turn three preacher looks good. And then we've got a few options on turn four, hopefully. Okay, hammer skull in blank green has to mean fight rigging. Opponent gets to play with shakedown heavy as well. Do we want to trade here? Uh, not really. We'll save Harvester for later. And then still go for Preacher, which can hold off a Hammer Skull. Don't have any answers to fight rigging, sadly. So I hope they don't have the namesake card. Go for the throat, answers Preacher. And a Dread Knight is next. Okay, so Hammer Skull gets a stun counter. Now do we trade? Could also just chump Hammer Skull. 
maybe way to sacrifice Harvester until we play Vito and Bloodcaster. Okay, so we get to play a 4-drop. And between Edgar and Vito... It's a close call. I think Edgar makes more sense in case they have another go for the throats. So we can um, still transform it. And I'll leave Harvester back. So we can maybe trade. Okay, now they have another Hammer Skull. And Bartolome was kind of an exciting draw. Probably still start with Vito, and then next turn we can go Bartolome Bloodcaster and start sacking stuff. And then I don't mind a double block. So the board is relatively stable, and we're about to pull off some fun synergies. So Bloodcaster plus Bartolome. Now Bloodcaster, I guess, doesn't make tokens when sacking uh, vampire tokens. Have to be non-token creatures. So we could wait on Bloodcaster and then for now go Epicure, Drinker, and Bartolme. And I was going to take one damage from the estate regardless here. So V2 attacks. And then I could use Bartolme right now to just sack two blood tokens. And then I guess we might go all the way by sacking an Icar Drinker here. So we get the third mode on Veto as well. Or maybe sack the Vampire Token actually, keep the non-token creature in play for Bloodcaster. Alright, so we've got a 5-4 Bartolome. Can go through the cycle again during the opponent's turn as well if we'd like. So we can block like so, take 6 is fine, or we can play it extra safe and chum block, and then sacrifice to Bartolome, which will also trigger Veto. I don't think I keep sacrificing, we'll wait until next turn. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Next turn we've got 8 in the air, plus we can drain more with Vito, so that's pretty much game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand is not very exciting. No blood token to combine with Baron, two tap lands. Let's take a mulligan. I guess we could eventually use the estate, but that's gonna take too long. Alright, this is a bit better. So Harvester plus Baron's a good pair to keep. And then we'll hang on to the Evangelist as well over Vran. We drew both of our basics, so a land destruction could be a bit of a concern. Yeah, we're just gonna curve out here, Harvester into maybe Evangelist first. And then we can try and set up the Madness with Convoke. Opponent on a dinosaur deck and glimpse, so can't interact with a mana creature here. The advantage of playing the sorcery instead. Now we could also play Evangelist and then immediately convoke a Markov Baron, but I think we'll save that for next turn when we can play another Evangelist, use a blood token, and convoke with madness. Bramble Familiar, so maybe not necessarily a fully dedicated dinosaur deck, more of a ramp deck. Okay, so stick to the plan. Play Evangelists. I guess uh, didn't really matter how I tapped. And then probably tap the bat token. And 
could play another Baron, but again, probably save that for next turn. Now if I had the Voldaren Estate, I could make a Blood Token very cheaply and then use that to Magnus once again, but this time we've got double Courtyard. Hulking Raptor, that's fine. And a Preacher. So I can play Preacher and then still convoke another Baron. And then probably attack all out. So yeah, nothing too fancy going on here, just a solid curve out draw. Putting the opponent under a lot of pressure and making good use of Convoke. And that does it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Could use an extra land or two. A blood token for Baron would be nice. Can maybe eventually make one with the estate. So, yeah. Could develop if we find some lands. And there's one of them. Turn two Bloodcaster. Turn three, maybe Preacher first. Opponent Grixis Colors. And Desecrator can enable some discard synergies. So... Play Crucible, play Bloodcaster, and pass. Let's see what our opponent discards. It's going to be the Blood Letter. That one's still pretty easy to cast at 4 mana. But they can maybe try and reanimate it as well. Okay, so play Preacher after attacking. If our opponent takes out the Bloodcaster, we would get a Blood Token, which we can then use to Madness the Baron as well. They might have a removal spell here for Preacher. Carnosaur takes out Bloodcaster, fair enough. Crewmate. Maybe digging for an artifact. Ooh, I see. I think I figured out our opponent's trying. This must be the uh, two mana artifact that needs pirate, dinosaur, vampire, and uh, merfolk. So, yeah, that's all four types. Okay, we've pieced it together. So now probably go for Edgar, or we could Preacher and then Madness tapping all three creatures, but then Preacher doesn't get to attack. Yeah, let's just play Edgar. And then I'll hang back with the Drinker still. Since uh, we can pump it up with Baron next turn to attack past the crewmate. Opponent had to go for the throat. But let us draw first. Yeah, crewmate makes sense as it can also help them find the artifact. Can activate to mill two, and then I forget exactly how much it costs to activate it. Still hasn't found it. Bitter Union can go digging. Discarding a tide binder. So yeah, opponent's going through the deck here, trying to find the key artifact. And we just want to keep up the pressure as much as possible. So I can play Preacher, and then activate the Blood Token, discarding Baron. And then Convoke, tapping Preacher and Drinker. So Edgar can attack as a 5-5. And found Vito. So now we're just missing Bartolome to sacrifice some stuff. Kind of hoping our opponent finds their artifact. So we can see it in action. 
but I'll definitely be trying a similar deck at some point myself. There it is. Throne costs four mana to craft. So they were one mana short of doing it here. And uh, yeah, now we get to play Veto. Attack all out. This will be a 7-7 seven, seven Menace Trample Lifelink Hexproof. But I think that's still a race we can win. And then we can very cheaply activate Voldern Estate. In fact, we can do it for free to make Blood Tokens. Probably should have attacked first in case we draw something useful with Preacher. And Restless Vents, that's fine. Okay, opponent had a tight Binder to set up an Ambush. Trading for Baron, jumping Edgar, taking 7. So I guess the plan now is to use the blood token since I should have used a state before the trade happened if I wanted to make another blood token. So we'll uh, pass a turn here and then blood token discarding a land next turn. Opponent mills two cards. They'll make their 7-7 seven, seven here. So opponent would go up to 17. So we would still potentially threaten lethal next turn with veto. Although I guess our opponent does get to keep the Desecrator back on defense since they have enough stuff in the graveyard. They're gonna give it haste right away, of course. And attack. And then sacrifice a no land permanent. Let's uh, sacrifice the blood token, which also triggers veto conveniently. And then our opponent can cast the Carnosaur. Not bad. Which discovers another bitter union. So yeah, I should have made another blood token with the estate. Which may end up making a pretty big difference. Found Epicure, so that enables a state for one mana, deals one more damage. So let's say we make two more blood tokens. Then I've got three I can now sacrifice, which would enable Veto all the way to drain for more damage. Problem is, next turn our opponent gets the Blood Letter, which can double their damage output as well. So I think we hang back. Try and survive next turn, and then with Veto, we should be able to take over. So in response to the trigger, we'll make our blood tokens. So we can sack one to the ability. V2 triggers and try to line up some blocks. So V2 on the blood letter can put Preacher and uh, I guess uh, a Drinker on the Grim Captain and then double block Carnosaur. Just make a couple trades. And then before damage, we can also use Veto. I'll hang on to Edgar since this one's gonna turn into a coffin. So, yeah, seeing the value of Voldaren Estate alongside Veto. So as the dust settles, we're at 15, opponent back up to 21. 
And they've got another throne. Makes sense. So they can try it once again next turn. Alright, let's get back on the board. Play Edgar, play Epicure. Can use our estates for free once again. And I'll send in probably just Vito. I'll leave the Vampire Demon back. Wouldn't be able to use Vito all the way. Can sack one blood token, sacrifice another, drain for two, or we can just make another blood token and then next turn go for it. Because if we were to block with Edgar and that turns into the coffin, we don't actually sacrifice to the legendary rule, so that doesn't enable Vito. Our opponent's got another captain here with haste. Very important. I'm probably going for the Carnosaur once again. A V2 triggers. And our opponent found a Preacher. Okay, so we'll make our Blood Token. I'll line up some blocks. Time to make more blood tokens. Could also activate the restless vents here. Can okay, maybe get a little bit more aggressive now, but yeah, we're still at 11, so I want to be a little bit cautious. But um, yeah, I think it's time to just churn through a few blood tokens now. And enable Vito's three abilities. Ooh, Olivia. That would be nice next turn. So we can discard Swamp and then still make another blood token here. Or now play Bloodcaster, which is probably better. And then Vito can attack. Okay. Opponent can keep digging. Try and find a third throne. And then next turn Olivia can bring back... Maybe a Markov Baron. Gonna be a blood letter. That's fine. Alright, opponent actually with a third throne now. So next turn they could craft it once again. Although not necessarily with haste. Okay, so we'll keep one Edgar. Trigger Bloodcaster as well. And as you can see, this did not trigger Veto since it's not technically a sacrifice effect. Okay, so Olivia and Smash looks good to me. And then I can still sack a blood token to Veto. I did not do the math, but kind of just want to see what happens. And that's enough for an explosion. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, our hand seems fine. And drink her into Harvester. Can maybe set up an early Madness Markov Baron. 
Although, would like to hit our land to maybe play Preacher first. Facing red-white. So, no third land in sight yet. I guess we could always use a blood token in the hopes of finding a land next turn and still madness the Mark of Baron. Okay, so now we can play Preacher. And then kind of just like attacking instead of convoking. If our opponent's a more controlling deck with board wipes, I don't want to overextend. And uh, this way we maybe get the blood token value of madnessing the Baron. Collector's Vault, so yeah, that definitely points towards a deck that might have a couple sweepers. So, we can attack with maybe just the Harvester and Preacher. So I can use Drinker for Convoke at instant speed during the opponent's turn. Epicure I can still play. And then we'll pass. So potentially gave up on a little bit of damage, but now the opponent may not necessarily fear lethal next turn, whereas we can present a Mark of Baron end of turn. Vault, probably discarding something big. The Thunder Hulk, a nice new reanimation target potentially. Alright, let's go for it. Discard Baron. And Madness. And then now we could also go for Henrika. But it's not gonna increase our damage output. So may as well just attack. Alright, looks like we got there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and our hand is fine. Missing some sacrifice synergies, perhaps. Start with a drinker. And then turn two harvester, turn three evangelist is still the sequence. Going on to red black. And their own Harvester. So we could just take it out here, play Evangelist, or we can just attack and offer the trade that way. Next turn we can add a Creature Land to the board. And then hope to find some of our powerful 4-drops. A Braid on Evangelist still leaves behind an extra token. So I haven't completely figured out the opponent's uh, game plan yet. Bartolome is not bad. Plenty of things we can sack to it. So we get to empty out our hand here. Plenty of artifacts and tokens we can sack to Bartolome. So if they point a burn spell at it, we can grow it in response. And then next turn the plan is to activate the events to attack all out. Maybe sacking a few blood tokens in the process. Appraiser goes discovering here. And hits a removal spell. Molten Collapse, that's going to take out Bartolome, no matter how large it is. Alright, that happens. So I can still animate the vents. And send them the back tokens as well. Between Epicure and Courtyard. Maybe discard Epicure, since Courtyard can still help sack a blood token. Let's 
So, don't have the most exciting hand left. Put now with the field of rune to answer restless events. And another harvester. So just a bad tokens that can keep chipping in. Now we can still animate the vents. The state has two vampires to go with it, so still a little bit pricey. Uh, can maybe start with a blood token activation. Discarding courtyard. Another drinker, also good value to discard to a blood token or events. I guess we can go for events attack, discarding Drinker, and then maybe trade it for a creature while we can. Even though Field of Ruin will still have a target in Voldaren Estate, which is good to take out. Might have wanted to sequence my mana a little bit differently if I wanted to leave myself with Blank to incubate. But we uh, can always just sack another blood token here. Our opponent discarding a duress doesn't have any targets in our deck. Okay, pass a turn. And yeah, there's Carnosaur, a nice curve topper. What does it discover? Another collapse. Can go after a bat token. Doesn't feel too bad. And then Harvester takes care of the last one. So as the dust settles, we're behind on board, but we've got a pretty big life total discrepancy. And we could top deck some exciting cards, of course. Preacher is one of them. So if I play Preacher, we would have three vampires, so then I can still make a blood token. Might be our last blood token if our opponent decides to use Field of Ruin. But then with the untapped land I could immediately use a blood token, but I guess there's still the issue of not having any cards in hand. And Drinker we can only incubate as a sorcery. It's going to be another underdog for now. Opponent has one card left. So yeah, finding an Edgar, finding Veto. Some of our other four drops would be nice. I will just take the hit for now. Okay, so if we attack, we will get to draw with the Preacher. And found another Vents. Okay, let's uh, get an attack in. Bloodcaster is not bad. Get to take out both creatures. Of course, would have played Bloodcaster before attacking if we had it in hand, but picked it up after. And then now we can incubate. And now it also becomes more appealing to maybe jump with some of our creatures, as we'll be getting blood tokens in return. We need five blood tokens before this transforms, so that's going to take some time. Another Abrade takes care of Bloodcaster and leaves behind a Blood Token. So yeah, we're likely still taking seven. We have six on the way back with events, so it's not quite lethal. And then we have to worry about a blitzed underdog as well. So end of turn, animate the incubator. Evangelists 
could be useful. So yeah, if I were to attack all out, we also gain one up to eight. So we're not necessarily dead to a Carnosaur attack. And we'll keep the Evangelist as something we can play and maybe block a Blitzed Underdog. Alright, so let's see if we're dead. If our opponent has another burn spell in hand, that might be all she wrote. Carnosaur only deals damage to creatures at least, so we don't know about any burn spells necessarily. So, yeah, I think I just block with the bats. Even if they have removal to trample for seven, we're at one. Maybe double block to play around shield roots would have been worth it. Put on digs with the blood token. Their own vents. And a rankles prank. Alright, so we end the game in a draw. GG's. I'll take that. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Haven't seen Olivia in action yet, so hopefully we can see it here. And we've got a keeper. Turn one, I'll play a one drop since we can play the events later pretty easily. Go with a drinker, maybe get a lifelink hidden. And commune with nature. So, opponent actually missed. Okay. Play Vran on two. Next turn we can play Apicure, maybe even use the Blood Token to discard land. And the Ancient One, I see. Your opponent's playing a combo deck, could be a fight rigging deck, trying to combine with Ancient One. And uh, yeah, our hand hasn't really developed all that well. Can use the Blood Token, discarding second Vran. And then just play events and attack. Yeah, let's see if they've got the fight rigging. Or just activate Ancient One, I guess might be their plan. Are they gonna mill themselves or are they gonna mill us? Discard Gishoth. Mill for eight. And they are milling themselves, so now they can almost attack. They just milled a few too many non-permanent cards. As we see, Squirming Emergence, I guess might be what they're planning here with Gishoth. Okay, so in the meantime, we can play Evangelist and attack. And then try and go wide here. So now they will be able to probably use Ancient One to make it an 8 8 attacker and blocker. Discarding Galtant Mavern. So yeah, it definitely looks like a combo deck. Have not seen fight rigging yet. Attack for eight, I'll take it. And then do we have lethal on the way back with the vents? I guess I can't actually activate the vents since I don't have red and black, too many courtyard type lands. But uh, let's see here, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven should be exact seas regardless. Alright, so we get to see our Mardu Sacrifice Vampires in action. And yeah, the deck picked up some awesome new synergies with Vito, especially alongside Bartolome, setting up those Sacrifice combos. And there's a lot of other new Vampires, of course. Preacher definitely stood out as one of the better cards. Sanguine Evangelist also performed quite well. And there's a lot of different ways you can approach Vampire decks in Standard. I've seen everything from a two-color decks to even four-color decks, thanks to the mana fixing from Cavern of Souls. Can maybe splash a bit of blue for Corpse Appraiser. There's a new Queen's Bay Paladin, which you could also be playing 
starting maybe in a slightly higher curve a reanimator deck maybe even getting back mavern and galta can also play green in your vampire decks so again there's a lot of ways to go about it but for now i was pretty happy with this more low to the ground mardu sacrifice build so that's going to do it for today's gameplay i want to thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day